everyone to another episode of College Hockey Talk. On today's podcast, I'm joined by sophomore of the Penn State women's hockey team, Julie Goff. Welcome to the podcast, Julie, and how's everything going? Good. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. I appreciate you taking the time and coming on. Um, obviously, your team did not make the national tournament. Uh, in your opinion, do you think you guys deserve to get in, and what's your overall thoughts on that decision? Yeah, I I think it's a tough tough situation for sure I mean of course we thought that um, we were deserving with the season that we had and just the hard work that we put in Um, so yeah it's extremely disappointing um, just for that to happen I am super excited to watch and cheer on the teams that did make it Um, but it definitely does hurt us deep down Um, but yeah so we're just gonna keep working new season starts today um, and next year we'll be out there playing at Pagula in the tournament. Definitely. And were you shocked when you found out your team didn't make it? Like, what was your reaction initially when you found out? Um, again, I would just say it hurt a little bit. Um, just kind of like, wow, we are um, done just because um, after the CHA tournament, we kind of just had a little bit of hope um, that we're still holding on to. We're like, maybe we'll make the tournament. Maybe we won't. Um, so, yeah, it was just kind of like a stab to the chest a little bit. Um, but, yeah. Now, did they give you guys an explanation why you didn't make the tournament? Because I was very surprised myself because you guys won 16 games. You're obviously one of the best teams in the CHA. And in the pairwise, I think you guys were a top eight team as well. Was there any explanation that was given to you? No, there was not. Um, nothing at all, really, no. Well, that sucks. I feel bad. Um, what's your preparation, though, for next year and how are you trying to use this as like a positive mindset, I guess? Yeah, I definitely think that just taking this and this feeling and how much um, it hurts us um, and just letting that propel us in our training and our on ice, our off ice, what we're eating, how we're sleeping, mentally preparing for next season and just the drive that we want to have this summer and throughout next season to get us where we want to be. Um, that's going to help us. So. Are you going to take a little bit of a break? Are you going to just go full throttle throughout the entire offseason? I think we definitely need a little bit of a break now. Um, We had such a tough season. I mean, it's the same every year. Um, But just this year with the COVID and everything, it's just taken that much of a strain on us. Um, And so I think that a couple weeks off will definitely help us just mentally prepare for what we're going to need to do. Now, I want to talk about that CHA semifinal you guys played against Syracuse. Uh, talk about that game, and what do you think went wrong in that game? Um, well, Syracuse is a great team. Um, I mean, they're hard to play against. They know us well. We've played them in the CHA. We've seen them many times. Even this season, they were the team in our league that we did struggle with the most. Um, we did play them at the beginning of the year, so we hadn't seen them in a long time. but. Um, there's really just no excuses. Um, it was a tough game. They played great and we really should have performed better and it didn't turn out in our favor, but we're just going to look back on that and how much it hurts that we can't make it. We didn't make it to the final, um, and just let that take us on the way forward. You guys seem to come back though in the third period and score two goals and really kind of push uh, your way, almost setting it to overtime. What was the message heading into the third period? Um, after the two second two periods you had where you gave up three goals? Um, yeah, going into the second period, or the third period, sorry. Um, just a lot of motivation there. Um, we we knew that we could do it. We've been down before. We did it against Syracuse before. We came back from, I don't even know how many goals. Um, and yeah, so just going into the third period, focusing on the fact that this might be our last period of hockey and putting everything out there. Um, for the people that um, might not be coming back to this team, just playing for them and playing for each other was really important to us. And, I mean, we did leave it all out on the ice and it didn't turn out in our favor, but we couldn't do much more. Yeah, and uh, obviously this year's college hockey season was very different due to the pandemic. Uh, what were some of the challenges you had to face because of the pandemic and how did you try to overcome some of those challenges? Yeah, At the beginning of the season, it was definitely hard, Um, just even being able to mesh together as a team. Um, We, at the very beginning, we had small ice sessions where there was five of us because of COVID protocols, or we worked out just with our roommates or who we immediately lived with. 
Um, so it was definitely tough starting out the beginning of the season, not being able to mesh together as a team right away. So it did take some time to do that. Um, and then just the, the mindset of um, it, like having, I don't know how to explain this, but having COVID-19 being a thing kind of, it's always on the back burner of your brain. And I mean, no one goes out of their way to get um, sick, but I mean, it's always there. We're wearing our masks, we're social distancing, we're not hanging out in big groups, but it's always like, you, you can go to the grocery store and get it, you know what I mean? So that's always been something that's kind of been on the back of our brains, I would say. And what was the key for have, coming together this season and kind of having that good um, uh, mesh like you were talking about because there was a lot of good uh, especially in your first line you guys had a lot of good connectivity um, how did you guys uh, try to get that connectivity going with so many freshmen coming in and a lot of new players coming in as well I would say as soon as we were able to be as a team at the rink and practice and work out together we really focused on meshing together and um, like really bringing the freshmen in and making it a family environment when we weren't able to be together, reaching out to them, FaceTiming them, calling them, um, whatever it is, just trying to make them feel as welcome as possible so that when we were together, we could hit the ice running. Um, and I think that really has helped us just taking every opportunity during practice or whatever to reach out to people, focusing on, um, especially in this hard year, just focusing on how everyone is and um, helping each other be better every day has helped us so much on the ice. Yeah, and uh, there was also a lot of schedule changes that happened throughout the season. How did you mentally stay prepared for all those changes and postponements that happened to your schedule? And what was the key for maintaining flexibility for this season? I think going into it, we knew that it was going to be flexible and we didn't know the future. We didn't know if we'd have another game. And I think that also helped us with the success that we had because we could play on Friday night and then our game on Saturday could get canceled. So it was all just a play in the moment type of thing. And every single day we were just thankful to be going to the rank, practicing, working out, being together, working on whatever it is that day. Um, so yeah, it was just, we had to stay in the moment a lot um, and just focus on the present. And was it weird to play this season without any fans in the arena? And how did you adjust to that? I mean, women's hockey doesn't, I mean, we don't really get the largest amounts of fans um, anyways, but I definitely think that it was a different atmosphere for sure. Um, we do have so much support from our family. I know my parents watch every single game. Um, my brothers, they sit in the basement of my house and watch every game. So there is a lot of support through TV, everyone. I know even our fans from Pagula last year and the years prior have been watching us. Um, so just knowing that that support is still there, even though people aren't allowed to come into the rink, um, has really helped us. And I think just keeping the positivity up on the bench and um, throughout the game has helped us to um, just focus on the game and not um, maybe how quiet it is. Yeah, and how what was it like playing in front of the cardboard cutouts? And was that an adjustment as well? Because no, that's something I noticed watching your team play is the dog cutout, cut, cardboard cutouts <laughs> in behind the net. Yeah, um, it was a little weird, I would say. There was just like a hundred different animals in the <laughs> ring. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, I think it was okay. It was just a little weird, like even in practice, like they keep them up. Um, and so we'll be practicing and there's just like, 50 dogs that are like staring at you um but yeah I think it's okay now something else that was introduced to college hockey this year was three and three overtime uh what was that like for yourself being an offensive player and having more space on the ice and having more chances to score goals uh I mean I've never played three on three before in overtime so it was kind of a weird experience I mean our first time was I think at versus Syracuse at home um, I remember it vividly, but I was in front of the net and I had like two chances with the goalie, um, one on no. Um, and so I just, there's like a ton of space out there and, um, definitely I would say just working with, um, the other two people that you're out there with definitely helps. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a little strange. I mean, you have to get used to it, but once you get used to it, it's pretty fun to do. 
Yeah, does that the, do those situations make you more defensively sound? Because if you make one little defensive mistake, it can cause it can cause an odd man rush and opportunities for the opponent to score goals. Yeah, I would say that as well. It's just um, I'd say you have to be kind of calm about it. Um, you can't get too offensive. You can't get too defensive. You kind of just have to stay in the middle um, because, like you said, you make one little mistake on the offense and they're going down two on one on a or going on one on a one on oh on a breakaway so you just have to be careful with that yeah and uh speaking of this year what do you think you have improved on the most uh since last season um well that last summer was definitely a huge um opportunity for me to um, really grow and get better um but for this year, I definitely just think um, being able to gel with my teammates. Um, I mean, you can't have su- success without the people around you. Um, so I think that how close we were this year and how much we cared about each other um, and loved each other um, really helped us all to find the success that we did. Um, and for me personally, I think it was just the um, extra work on and off the ice um, that finally just clicked I guess I don't know um I mean it's wonderful but it definitely doesn't come without the success of your teammates yeah what are some of the things you worked on in the off season, especially on the ice because you had that goal scoring touch this year especially with the amount of points you had um yeah for sure I mean the thing that I really focused on was um conditioning um because that's just a giant aspect of I mean m- not even my game, but everyone's game. I mean, if you can't go up and down the ice, I don't like, I don't know. Um, And so that's something I really focused on. And then um, outside in my like garage area, I have nets. So every day in the summer, I'd go out, shoot pucks, um, stick handling, passing, um, whatever it was, just focusing on me being able to find the success that I did. Yeah, no, and especially with those conditioning drills, it can be pretty tough. How do you try to handle it, especially in the beginning of the season? Because I know a lot of hockey teams do like the fitness test. That's like the first thing you do. How did you try to deal or how do you try to deal with all those conditioning drills when you're so physically exhausted? Um, Yeah, I mean, they're definitely hard. They never aren't. Um, But yeah, again, what I said earlier, just staying in the present, um, focusing on the fact that it it will be over. I mean, you're always going to get through it no matter how hard it is. And um, even during the year, like no matter how exhausted you are, your teammates are going through the same thing. Um, And so I think that definitely helps is just focusing on the fact that you're not in this alone and other people are going through it as well. And even in the summer when I'm training by myself or whatever it is, um, I mean, my mom always worked out with me. My mom always did the conditioning with me. So I was never alone. And even when I did want to quit, I just think, well, what, what's that going to help my teammates? You know, like they're, they're doing the exact same thing right now. And if I'm cheating myself, then I'm cheating the team. Yeah, so I definitely. think that really helps. Yeah, definitely. That's a good mindset to have. And obviously you were a sophomore this year. Uh, what type of leadership did you want to bring to the team? Were you more of a vocal or lead by example type of player? Because like I said before, you had a really big freshman class and a lot of new players join your team this year. Yeah, I think that just we have such a young team. um, And so it's a it's a weird environment um, a little bit just because there is, I think, nine freshmen. There's four sophomores. So we are a bottom heavy team. Um, But for me, definitely, I would just say leading by example. I'm a very vocal person. um, And so I love like screaming on the bench, yelling, whatever it is in practice, cheering people on. And I definitely think that does um, improve the atmosphere. And then just the leading by example, I mean, like if I'm not doing it, why would anyone else? Um, or whatever it is, if I'm not working hard in practice, then why, why do they have to work hard in practice? So um, I think leading by example is a huge part. I mean, silence speaks volumes. So, yeah. Yeah. Talk about the leadership that your team had with Natalie Heising and how did the, that help your team as well? I mean, all of our captains, Natalie, Renee, Anna, they're amazing people, great leaders. Um, Natalie, for sure, is probably one of the best captains that Penn State hockey could ever have. Um, She leads by example. She pushes us. She is, 
everything that you could ask for in a captain. Um, so I think that the leadership that we had and just them leading by example and pushing everyone every single day really helped us. And do you learn anything from watching Natalie as a leader? And do you think that'll help you when you become a leader as, as a senior? Yeah, I definitely think that, um, I think that learning from other people and watching other people um, really can help you. Um, and you can learn millions of things from watching. Um, so I definitely value her as a person, her opinions, um, and just the way that she plays is amazing. She is an amazing player. So one day I hope to be half as the player she is. Yeah, definitely. And obviously your team was one of the best teams in the country, like I just said in the beginning of the podcast. How did you try to deal with all the pressure of being a ranked team? And uh, how did you try to focus on the task at hand and not focus on the outside noise that your team was facing during this year? Yeah, um, again, staying in the present and just focusing on the fact that we do have a target on our back now. Um, and just because of all the success that we've had, um, we're hoping that it'll continue, obviously. So just every single game and every single day, we want to have that underdog mentality. And going into the game, it doesn't matter if you're ranked, you're leading your league, everyone everyone can have a good game and come back and beat you, um, whatever. I mean, we, we saw it at Syracuse. We were the number one seed and they came in and beat us. Um, so we always just have to think about how the, everyone wants to beat us now. And we're the team that people want to upset. How did your team improve so much uh, from this past year? Because you guys were kind of a 500 team your freshman year. And then it seems like something clicked uh, this offseason. You guys really exploded and had a lot of wins. And I think the biggest thing I noticed from your team was you guys split a lot of series your freshman year. And this year you were sweeping series and you're really just dominating teams. Uh, was there anything you worked on or your team worked on before the season that helped that switch happen? Um, I mean, the freshmen are amazing players. They love coming to the rink. They truly are hockey players. Um, and I definitely think that um, them being here has really taken us to the next level. Um, and yeah, I think that us coming together as a team and focusing on like group, um, like just being close as a group is what really took us to the next level. I don't necessarily think it was us working on something in specific or having goal scorers or whatever. We're just a very tight group and that has helped us. Uh, I want us now start talking about the beginning of your hockey career. Uh, you're from Newcastle, Ontario. How did you start playing hockey and what made you fall in love with the sport? So when I was little, um, I was actually a figure skater for a couple of years. My mom wanted me to be, I don't know. Um, and then I got into hockey, just I have two older brothers. And so they obviously played and I would always go watch their games. I would be mesmerized. Um, and so finally my parents were like, all right, we'll switch you. Um, funny story, actually, my mom bought me like all pink stuff because she was like, you can't be a girl playing hockey or whatever. So I had like pink gloves and a pink helmet and a pink stick. It, it was the whole nine yards. Um, yeah. And so that's how I started. I played a couple of years in my hometown. Um, and then I transferred to girls hockey. I played for the Clarington Flames for, I don't know, maybe six or seven years. Um, and then that's when I made the transition to go play um, at Durham West. And just, I would say what made me fall in love with the game is just like, I'm, I mean, everything about it, but I would say just looking up to my brothers really made me want to um, play. And then just being able, once I started playing girls hockey, it just took me to another level, having all these friends and the opportunity to play each day was really amazing. How do your brothers still play hockey today? They play like old person league. Like <laughs> um, my, my one, pro my one brother, um, doesn't really play anymore and then my other one does. Was it cool having siblings that played and what was the sibling rivalry like between you guys and did that help your hockey development in any sort of way? Yeah I mean it was amazing. Um, my my brothers didn't play at such a high level that I did. Um, I mean it was still good hockey of course. Um, it always is um, but yeah I think that the one thing in the rivalry was just the fact that um, 
they would always kind of make fun of me, I guess. Or even when I committed here to Penn State, they're like, blah, 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 you're, you think you're so good, like, and just like teasing me about it. Um, and then just when I was little, like my brother and I, we would um, play in the basement. We'd play like road hockey and he'd make me like put on the pads and he would like hammer shots at me all day long, um, just trying to practice. And he would always be like, I'm so much better than you, like blah, 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 just sibling stuff. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, especially being the younger sibling, you always get teased the most, in my opinion, because I'm the younger sibling oh, as well. Yeah, yes, it's terrible. They still do it to this day. <laughs> yep, I understand that. Um, so <laughs> transitioning from girls hockey or from boys hockey to girls hockey, how did you transition from that? Because obviously, it's they're a little bit different, in my opinion, from at least watching it. I'm assuming playing boys hockey and transitioning to girls hockey was an adjustment as well. Um, I mean, yeah, it was a little bit. I was. I was pretty young. Um, I only played boys when I don't know, maybe when I was seven, six or seven or seven or eight, probably. Um, and so it wasn't too bad. I mean, people aren't really developed at that age. So um, I definitely think if I had to stay a couple years longer, it would have been a bigger transition. Um, but yeah, it because we were so young, it wasn't too big of a deal. Now, who was your favorite player growing up and what part of their game did you like the most? I mean, typically, I would say probably Haley Wickenheiser um, from the Olympic team, but um, I would definitely say that my older brother, James, um, he's just such a, he was a small person um, on the ice and just worked really, really hard and gave me the motivation um, to want to be better and to work harder. Um, and he never took a shift off. He um, would train super hard, stick handling, whatever it was. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely think that him, um, or, I mean, Haley is an amazing player as well. And she led the Olympic team to so many, um, so much success. Um, so yeah, both of them. Was it cool seeing, uh, Wickenheiser get inducted to the hall of fame? I know that was a big deal for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And what were watching those Olympic games like with her, especially when there was Team USA versus Team Canada in the 2010 and 2014 Olympics? Because those were pretty good games to watch. And I know it inspired a lot of players to start playing hockey. Yeah, I mean, the Olympics are amazing. I mean, you can't have enough good things to say about them. The hockey that's played there is just unbelievable. Um, so I think it was a super cool experience. I mean, watching them play over the TV just really inspired me to want to be there one day. Um, and even if I can't, like just putting in all the work and they really are inspiring people, the amount of um, work that they put in and how much sacrifices they make. Now, before Penn State, you played for Durham West Junior Lightning uh, in the PWHL. Uh, how'd you get the opportunity to play with that organization? Um, yeah, so when I went from Clarington to Durham West, I was major bantam, I don't know, grade eight or nine. Um, and yeah, I just, I went there, I talked to coaches, um, there was a spot open on the team. I started out playing um, for the midget team, which was the, like, the, there's the junior team and then the midget team is just like a year younger. Um, and yeah, so I played a season with the midget team and then I was able to play two seasons with the PW. Um, and yeah, so I just got the opportunity by reaching out to the coaches, um, and just putting myself out there really. Yeah. And what was your experience like in the PWHL and what was your favorite memory you had with the Durham West organization? Um, I mean, playing in the PWHL is, it's a great league. The players are amazing. I mean, there's so many girls now playing in the States or playing back in Canada um, that were in that league. I mean, every team that we play, I probably know someone on um, that played in the league. Um, so, yeah. And then um, my best memory while in midget, I mean, this isn't junior, but in midget, we were able to go to the SO Cup, um, which was in Manitoba. And yeah, that was just an amazing experience. We, I think we got bronze, um, but the whole week of being there was just an incredible experience. Um, 
and then playing with the junior team um we had in playoffs one year um we just had an opportunity to all come together and um with another team because of a situation that had happened um and so just that moment um was very it was a very memorable moment for us yeah and how did your experience with durham help prepare you for college hockey with penn state I mean, we treated each other and we treated our games and our practices like we were going to the college level and every single day. I mean, my coach would say, if like, if you're not playing here, you're not playing in college. Um, Or just like, if you're not working hard, like now it's not going to propel you to the next level. Um, And so I would say just every single day, focusing on the fact that we need to get better and we need to prepare ourselves because college is different. Yeah. And, um, What was your recruiting process like and why did you choose to go to Penn State at the end of the day? Um, The recruiting process is, I mean, beyond insane. The amount of stuff that happens, the phone calls, the emails, everything. Um, But yeah, I mean, I had a wonderful experience. I talked to people. I went to schools. I visited um, many times, many places. Um, but yes, I, I always tell the story of when I came to Penn State for the first time, um, I stepped out of the car at Pagula and, um, I looked at my mom and said, this is where I want to go. Um, before I had even seen anything, I, I had driven down University Drive, um, like two seconds ago. Um, and I stepped out of the car at Pagula and I said, like, I want to go here. This is my new home. Um, and so that's kind of how I came to the conclusion of Penn State. I mean, it's a wonderful school, wonderful campus. The academics are top tier and the hockey program is just unbelievable. So, yeah. Yeah, and was there any adjustment you had to make to college hockey? Was it the speed of the game since you're going against players that are four years older than you were or was it kind of the mental side of the game making quicker decisions with the puck? I mean, I would say all over the place. I mean, every aspect of the game you can find somewhere that, is different. I mean, the speed is definitely one thing, but just the physicality of it as well. The CHA is a hard league to play in. Um, The girls are tough. It's a strong game. Um, I mean, if you're out there playing RMU, you're battling against the boards, you're getting checked, you're getting whatever it is, drawing penalties. Um, So that was a huge change from just being in the PWHL Um, and coming to college hockey it's just a lot stronger and the girls I mean we work out every day so you're bound to be stronger than you were before so I think the strength and the speed is definitely a huge aspect and how did you balance or how do you balance the both the academic and hockey side of being a student athlete it's definitely hard I mean it gets stressful at times but I think the biggest thing for me is just having a planner, um, planning out my days when I'm going to do my homework. I mean, Sundays are a great day. We have off days. We focus on our homework and do our recovery um, from the weekend. And yeah, I think that's just a huge thing is just having amazing time management. Um, But we've been doing this for so long. I mean, I've been throughout high school. I had to do the exact same thing. It's just a different schedule now. Um, And so, yeah, I think just being extremely organized and and managing your time well um, really helps with the student athlete. Has online school changed your time management skills in any way? I mean, (laughs) I would say a little bit just with um, being home all day. It's so different. Um, I mean, the procrastination is for sure there a little bit. Um, It's bound to happen. But just being at home, it's a little bit tougher to get on the grind and maybe just like sit here for whatever it is two hours um it's a little bit harder because like my bed's right behind me so it's tough to get focused and especially with um covid going on we're not allowed to like go like i can't just like go to a cafe and study um so it's been a bit harder to just um like focus here and so the time management has really um helped Yeah, I know it's weird because whenever I'm in the library at my school, I can get my work done in like a reasonable number of time. I'm super focused. However, when I'm at my house, it's a completely different story. I don't know if there's like a study where like your environment that you're in affects how you focus on your work, but it's pretty crazy how that all works out. Yeah, I would agree with that. 
Now, how, how, what's your thoughts on like the Zoom classes? Because in my opinion, I think it's better to do a face-to-face -face lecture because you get more out of the class. However, with Zoom, you can just hop on in anytime you want, which is kind of nice. So you get to sleep in a little more than you get to used to. What's your thoughts on that whole situation? Um, so, I mean, me personally, um, I was homeschooled when I was younger um, until high school. So I've been doing kind of home classes my whole life. Um, and so I think for me, Zoom is okay. Um, it is for sure different. It's a lot harder to focus. I mean, it's so easy to just turn your camera off and sit there on your phone. Um, so it's definitely a conscious effort to put your phone away, get your notes out, turn your camera on and be focused in class. Um, but yeah, I would definitely agree. I would love to have in-person classes back just because I feel like I focus a lot better. And how do you deal with the Zoom breakout rooms? Because that's a controversy amongst many of my friends, how we don't like it at all. How do you try to deal with all that? Because no one puts their camera on or talk in any sort of way. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I would just say that every single breakout room, I'm the person to turn my camera on and say, hi, guys, like mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but yeah, I, the breakout rooms do annoy me a lot. <laughs> um, I think. I mean, you can't not do them, obviously, but yeah, it's a bit annoying when you go in and everyone's camera is off, no, my, all the microphones are muted. Um, so yeah, it's a bit annoying, but I mean, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, no, it just stinks because like you have to do it because it's a participation grade. So like usually I hop in and no one has their cameras on, no one has their microphones on and, and some used to, so you wait for like a minute. It's like maybe someone will finally start talking. And then after like and three no minutes, it's like, it's like, I got to say something or else I'm going to like not get the participation grade that I need. So that's like the, yeah. it's like super annoying when that happens. Yeah, I agree. And then like the, you go back to the main session of the Zoom and everyone's like, yeah, we had such a great conversation. Everyone was engaged. And like, I feel like I always get the group that no one cares about. When yeah. it gets to, yeah. Listen, when people are engaged, it gets the work done faster. So people don't realize that. Yeah. Yeah. Or sometimes I'll be like in the breakout room and like no one's saying anything. And then the teacher comes in and oh, they're yeah. like, what's going on? And you're like, we've been sitting here for 10 minutes and no one said anything. <laughs> and then there was yeah. usually someone's like, yeah, you know, we've been talking about this and that. And they're like, oh, good, good, good. And it's like, <laughs> that was definitely not happening. Yeah, we did not talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now I want to head back. I want to start talking a little bit more about your hockey career with Penn State and specifically talking about your freshman year a little bit. So you're on, you obviously play under coach uh, Campersall. You obviously won the coach of the year with the CHA. What's it like playing under him and how has he helped your hockey development in college? I mean, he's a great coach. Um, he truly does care about us and wants us to win games. Um, he, he has taught me so much about, um, I mean, who I am as a person, who I am as a player um, just like working every single day. Um, I mean, he corrects us in practice. He, gives us tips, um, meetings with us. Um, so yeah, I mean, I couldn't say enough good things. Um, but yeah, I think that even just this year, he has um, really taken the coaching role on um, at a different level, um, just because of this year, I mean, crazy times call for um, things to happen. Um, but yeah, I think just being the leader of our team um, as a higher authority has really helped us out. Yeah, and um, in the in your freshman year, you lost to Mercyhurst in the CHA playoffs. I ask you that question because <clears throat> did you learn anything from that playoff experience you had your freshman year that helped you out uh, for your playoff experience this year you just had this past weekend? Yeah, I mean, same as this past weekend, last year was a tough loss as well I mean it wasn't as great of a game as our Syracuse game was um I think we lost 4-1 or something um but yeah I mean just taking that and how much it hurts um and like reminding ourselves that we wanted to make it to the final this year um we didn't want to have that feeling of losing in the semis um anymore because Penn State has never made it to the final game in the CHA tournament um and so yeah I just think that taking that away from last year um helped us with our um mindset coming into the Syracuse game 
Now, this year's CHA tournament was obviously hosted in Erie. Everyone was playing in the same stadium. Uh, what was it like being in that kind of bubble environment? And uh, what was that like being a player in that atmosphere? With Because I was seeing some of the p- pictures. It was like a pretty big stadium. However, there was like no crowd and it seemed pretty dead in there uh, when you were playing. Yeah, um, I think the Erie Otters play there um, from the OHL. But, I mean, it's definitely a way different environment. Um, we were allowed, I think, there was some fans there. I mean, we had parents in the stands. Um, of course, it's way quieter than what it would have normally been. Um, but yeah, so the environment was, it was a little different, strange. Um, I mean, we play at Pagula, but it's our home ice. It's a bigger rink, but um, we know it well, and we know the stands, we know how it feels. Um, but yeah, so I think that this rink was like a little different, a little darker. I don't, I don't know why, um, but yeah, and then just being all there, all six teams was kind of a weird feeling just because we, we traveled to RIT, we traveled to Syracuse, um, whatever it is, um, but then having everyone there at one moment, I mean, we're walking out of the rink and RMU is on the ice practicing, so it's like kind of a weird situation. Yeah, definitely, and obviously, uh, this, the the national tournament's going to be held in Erie as well. What's that like environment like? And what's it like being in Erie? Because I've never been there before. And it seems like it's the center of the college hockey world all of a sudden this month. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't, I think it's just like, it's Erie. I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a little bit, um, I don't know how to explain it. I, I was- mean, personally, I wouldn't choose to go there. Yeah, like I would probably find somewhere else to go. Um, and so I think it's kind of weird that um, the NCAA tournament was there. I mean, and the CHA tournament, of course. But, um, I mean, the people that put this on, they really did make an amazing atmosphere for what we um, could do with COVID. And I think that the NCAA tournament is going to be um, just as amazing. Penn State's hosting the NCAA tournament in a few years, right? Am I wrong? next year oh nice that's gonna be awesome yeah yeah who would that be being in the frozen four at your home arena yeah it would be more than amazing (laughs) especially since hopefully i'm just gonna say hopefully there will be fans there as well since covid seems to be hopefully taking a rear turn uh for the better uh Mm -hmm. so will be an adjustment having fans back in the stadium like as normal uh next year or have you really not thought about that i mean for, I mean, I've thought about it, of course. Um, I think that what we're hoping for is for more fans, obviously. Um, I think it would be an, an amazing feeling to walk out onto the ice and have people from all angles um, watching our games, watching women's hockey, because um, you don't see that a lot. I mean, you see it in Minnesota, Wisconsin, all those big teams um, do have those fans. And I think that with the year that we've had and the progress that we that we've made um we could do some amazing things with it now i have to address something that happened i saw on social media you guys were fully dressed on the team bus heading into (laughs) practice uh why did you have to dress in the hotel and was it weird riding in your full equipment gear yeah i mean i've never really done that before so it was weird um so wednesday of last week we were able to practice at um erie insurance arena um where the tournament was Um, And then on Thursday, we couldn't because they had the quarterfinal games. Um, And in the morning, they were using the ice for pregame skate. So we didn't have a time slot. Um, And so we had to go to the rink, get dressed, um, put our gloves and our sticks, or put our helmets and our sticks and our skates in a bag, um, and then walk outside and bus to Mercyhurst. Um, And so it was really weird. felt like I was a kid again um but yeah it was kind of a fun experience I mean we walked off the bus and we were just in full gear all we had to do was put on their skates and then after practice we just took off our skates got back on the bus and went back to the rink so it was like a little bit weird yeah definitely it was pretty funny though when I saw the photos on Instagram and all the social media platforms and you guys seem to be enjoying it as well I feel bad though for like the goalie equipment because that must be even worse because you're so hot and it's like hard to move especially with yeah. Um, yeah, it was funny. They got dressed in the locker room and then 
there was cement outside so um they had to be like rolled on a like a cart outside <laughs> like from the locker room to the bus um because they had their skates on and they couldn't like walk with their skates on or whatever so one of the um one of our support staff logan was pushing them like in a cart out to the bus it was pretty funny yeah, definitely, definitely. Were you a home dresser? I know some people growing up used to get dressed up at their house and then come to the skate or the rink and everyone made fun of that person, it felt like to me. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, when I was super young, I probably did it. I mean, I don't really remember it, but um I'm pretty sure I used to like go in I don't know what you call them, like long johns. But, like the stuff that you wear underneath your equipment when you're I know, your... it's like where you put this like on. Yeah, yeah, they're like I, don't know what they're I feel like they were like almost pajamas or something. Um, but yeah, and I used to like wear those to the rank and like put on my tennis shoes and like walk, uh, go to the rank. Um, but I, I don't remember like full on getting dressed at home unless yeah. I had to, but I don't remember. I never really did. Like I put on like the under like jersey stuff. I don't know what that's called. It's like the yeah. the shirt, like the workout shirt, and then like the stuff yeah. with your socks on, but like never like yeah. Um, in the locker room or anything like that yeah yeah no so I have to ask you about some of the players you get to play with um, during your team with your team uh, one of those players is Kiara Zan and she was obviously named to be a top 10 finalist for the Patty Kazmaier award uh, what's it like being your teammate and what's it, what's her skill what's it like uh, seeing her skills every day in practice and in games and what makes her such a special player I mean Kiara amazing person amazing player um I again don't have enough good things to say about her. Um, it's been an amazing experience being able to learn from how she plays, how she carries herself, the hard work that she puts in. I mean, one day she will probably play in the Olympics. Um, I mean, I hope for her sake um, and for Team USA, USA. I think that's a great um, addition to their team. Um, as for me being able to play with her, I think it's just been a learning experience for me. Um, and she's definitely taught me things about my game that um, have really helped us as a line, gelling together as a team and everything. And you also get to play with Rachel Weiss. And she's a very good player, super underrated player as well. We had her on the podcast, super great person as well. What's it like being her teammate as well? Yeah, um, well, Rachel and I are actually roommates. Um, she like lives literally right there. Um, she can probably hear me talking right now. Um, she's one of my best friends. She's an amazing player. Again, amazing person. Um, she played for U18 Team Canada. She's done amazing things. She went to Sweden in the fall, was playing in Sweden. Um, yeah, I think that being able to play with her again, learning experience. I mean, playing with different people is a different game. Um, loved playing with Rachel, loved playing with Kiara. Um, it's just whatever the coaches think is going to mesh. Um, but yeah, I think definitely just having a close relationship with everyone really does help to find that chemistry on the ice. Oh, we're now in the non-hockey segment of the podcast where I ask you some non-hockey questions. My first question to you is what music do you like to listen to or what, what fires you up before a game? Um, so bef before a game, um, I like a lot of like I want to say like old music like I don't really think it's old but like I'll listen to like Eye of the Tiger or um, Thunderstruck is what we do for um, starting lineups, um, Hell's Bells, songs like that um, or just like the classic pump up songs from today's day and age. Um, I like listening to Big Booty Mix on SoundCloud. Um, we listen to that during warm-ups um, and then like outside of hockey I really love country music so oh, nice. if I'm like doing homework I'll put on country music yeah and uh, which big booty remix is your favorite because I know there's like 20 of them on SoundCloud yeah I, I probably couldn't pick um yeah. I like 11 15 14 is good yeah 18 I mean they, they are all pretty good <laughs> yeah um and which country artist is your go-to artist like who do you like listening to i know thomas Rhett is big everyone loves luke yeah I'm, I luke think combs is probably but... my favorite all right all right I, I i i don't know i think some of his songs are good but some of the songs are kind of repetitive in my opinion i don't know if yeah you that i could see how one would feel that way <laughs> yeah no but country is good though i feel like people hate on it too much i never understood why people hate on country as much as they do especially since yeah. like people 
people say like, oh, how can you relate to country music? It's the same thing with other genres as well. Mm-hmm, for sure. Um, another non-hockey question I like to ask you is, what is your favorite TV show to watch? Um, probably Friends. Um, I think it's like the funniest show ever. Um, and then I also liked um, Vampire Diaries I watched. Um, what else is there? Grey's Anatomy. I mean, I, I really will watch anything as long as it kind of hooks me in. Um, I mean, I haven't really watched, probably haven't watched a TV show since Christmas because I've been so busy. Um, but I'd say Friends is probably my favorite. Uh, which character from that show you think would be the best hockey player? Uh, Joey nice. or Chandler. I don't know. One of the two of them. Definitely, definitely. Now, speaking yeah. of your teammates, uh, who is the funniest uh, teammate you have? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, everyone is funny in their own way. Um, I, uh, oh my, I don't know. I mean, I would say maybe Jenna Brenneman. She just is like genuinely a funny person. Um, everything she says makes me laugh. Um, so probably her or um, Amy Dobson. She's another one of my roommates. We just like go back and forth laughing at each other. Um, so one of the two of them. Now, who has the best style on the team besides yourself, obviously? <laughs> uh, probably Natalie Heisen. And uh, if you could have lunch with anyone in the world, who would it be and why? Hmm. Probably Michael Jordan. Um, he's just an amazing inspiration to people. Um, one of the greatest athletes of all time. Um, but yeah, probably him. Just, I would love to just like sit down and have a conversation about everything in his life. Yeah, no, I don't know if you watched the Last Dance documentary, but I loved his mentality on just uh, how he went about being a basketball player and how he mm-hmm. just is so successful in life as well. And I think that'll be an interesting conversation to have, especially since the one part of the documentary that I liked the most when he was talking about how he was sometimes a hard teammate, but he did it because he wanted to motivate his players to become better and become better mm-hmm. people as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I watched the show as well. Um, and the whole time, I mean, I was like, wow, this is amazing. You are amazing. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that you can learn a lot of things from him. Now back to some hockey questions now. My first one to you is, uh, what do you think should be done to help grow women's hockey in your opinion? Um, I mean, of course, just putting it out there really on the social media platforms. I mean, you scroll through how many NHL games can you watch on TV, how many whatever other sports it is, um, and how many um, women's hockey games are you going to look through your channels and find? Probably none. Um, And so I think just putting it out there, broadcasting games, I mean, the, um, the not even college games, but the other leagues, I think just putting it out there, people um, will start to respect it more and just to grow the game would be huge. Yeah, definitely. It seems like Penn State is doing a good job streaming you guys on like the different platforms I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, my last, before I let you go, is there any shout outs you'd like to give to your teammates, friends, family members, anyone we didn't mention already? Um, I think just to my family. Um, I mean, they've been a rock to me throughout every single aspect of my life. I mean, my parents, my two older brothers, my dog, um, my extended family, my dad's side of the family is borderline psychotic about hockey um, (laughs) in a good way, of course. Um, But yeah, they just, the amount of support that I feel from back home, especially um, with the borders being closed right now, they're not allowed to come down. So it's been tough not being able to see them. Um, But yeah, just thank you to them, basically. Yeah, and thank you so much, Julie, for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it so much. Uh, I wish you all the best uh, for your off season. I know you're going to do great next year. You're a great player, and I love watching you play. So it really means a lot to me that you took time out of your day and came on to chat. So stay safe, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. You as well. Now, before I let you go, I just have a quick uh, question I ask everyone. 